professor and dean at the College of Agriculture and Bioresources at the University of Saskatchewan, uh, uh, Dr. Bedard Hahn. Thank you for joining Great. us. Great. Well, thank you very much for having me. Good evening, everyone. Bonsoir to. I speak to you today from Treaty 6 territory, the traditional homeland of the Métis and the center of the prairies, which are home to 80% of Canada's farmland. And we also have a whole lot of uh, forest soils as well. So I grew up on a farm here in rural Saskatchewan. I did my first two degrees here at USASC before moving to Davis, California for my PhD. I returned to USASC as a professor of soil science and eventually uh, became dean a couple of years ago and past president of the Canadian Society of Soil Science and served two terms on the board of directors for the Saskatchewan Soil Conservation Association. So I am a soil enthusiast and a passionate soil supporter. And so I just want to start by thanking this committee for taking on this important work, which has an imperative not just for Canada, but for global, uh, global food security, global soil security. So I'd like to reiterate um, Laura's definition of soil health. And so I want to emphasize that when I talk about soil health, I'm not talking about any one thing. I'm talking about the ability of a given soil to perform ecosystem services. But I want to emphasize that that to the best of its potential. And so I think this is an important piece that we need to think about. Soil performs many ecosystem services, as, as Laura summarized. Um, but some soils are inherently better at each of these ecosystem services than others. And so what we need to be striving for, there's no one soil where we can say, okay, that, that's it, that's the ideal for healthy soil, because each soil has to, can only perform to the best of its ability in a given climate. And so a sandy soil in southwestern Manitoba or, uh, or southwestern Saskatchewan compared to uh, rich loamy soil in southwestern Manitoba, they're going to do perform very differently in terms of some of these metrics of soil health, but what we should be striving for is for them to achieve their optimum soil health. And so well, how we manage a particular soil for, for its optimum health depends both on the soil and as, as Laura has highlighted, the desired services that we want to optimize. The challenge, of course, when we talk about a national framework for soil health is given the, the, the dynamic and somewhat subjective, uh, subjective definition. We've already heard about soil carbon. You know, if we take two soils with similar texture in a similar climate, the one with more carbon or more soil organic matter is going to be healthier according to multiple metrics. It will have better structure. It will have a more robust microbial community and be better able to grow plants, filter water, cycle nutrients, and so on. So to an earlier question, if we could only measure one thing, it should be carbon. Um, and certainly here in the prairies, we celebrate the no-till success story where that widespread change in management reduced erosion, uh, water increased water conservation and nutrients and carbon storage. But we also know from the follow-up work that we've done since the adoption of, of conservation tillage, uh, we've had a, a, a repeat study called the Prairie Soil Carbon Balance Study. And we know from that work that spatial variability of something as, as fundamental as soil carbon can be really high within on the order of within a few meters, as well as across climatic gradients from uh, semi-arid to subhumid. And that this also the temporal variability, so year to year variability of some soil processes can be high due to changing management practices and things like multi-year droughts that lead to crop failure. And uh, you know it, it, that has impacts on the soil health as well. And so if, we're seeing these kinds of variability in carbon, these other soil health indicators will vary as well. And so I want to really emphasize, one of my key points for this group is that understanding the current state of soil health will really require some rigorous baseline measurement programs that recognize these key drivers of spatial and temporal variability. So it's not enough to have you know, one sample here and there, we need to understand that spatial and temporal variability. And I. I can't overstate the importance of baseline data. You know, if I want to lose weight, I have to get on the scale today so I know where I'm starting from. So next time I get on, have I, has the number gone up or down? And I also need to know that, that some of that temporal variability, you know, did I get on the scale before breakfast or right after Thanksgiving dinner? It's going to look quite different. Um, and it, just to follow on the previous uh, witnesses' comments, I, I want to emphasize as well that tracking Canada's soil health over time is really going to require coordinated monitoring and data management, both regionally and nationally. That's one minute. 
Uh, so over the past few decades, the soil information management has become increasingly distributed. As one of the senators noted, it is we've got multiple sectors. We've also got industry uh, c collecting data, researchers collecting data. It's scattered all over. We've got a lot of data being collected, but we have no way to bring that together, and we are losing out on major opportunities to leverage the power of big data. So I just want to close by saying, you know, we've got a lot of information being collected. Yes, I agree with my the previous witnesses in terms of the need for additional research, but we also need to get more strategic and coordinated in terms of how we work with the results of that research and think about that across the country. Best practices are going to look very different, whether you're in the Fraser Valley or Regina Plains or St. Lawrence Lowlands, and we need to be thinking about that. So with that, I will conclude my remarks, uh, thank everyone for their attention, and I would welcome the opportunity to answer any of the questions that the first round of witnesses got to. I was sitting here with twitching with my hand on the hands up button, so. <laughs> thank you very much uh, to